<clears throat> Thank you very much, uh, Chairman Rubio. And, and let me just say to Senator Gardner, we, we do everything we can as those skiers move through from Mexico through New Mexico to keep them as long as we can. We've extended <laughs> our ski areas, just this, say, extended the opening. So uh, we're going to do everything we can to, to keep them from going to Colorado. Um, Governor Richardson and, and uh, Ambassador Noriega, wonderful to be with you here, and this has been an excellent discussion. Uh, I think one of the points that you've made that I think is, is very important is treating Mexico like an equal. Uh, and I think the, what we've seen in this relationship uh, with the president and the president of Mexico is that hasn't been the case. It's been a very kind of condescending uh, approach. And I, I, I know we were all shocked at where uh, President Trump has taken uh, U.S.-Mexico relations, calling uh, Mexican immigrant, uh, immigrants rapists and murders, insulting uh, their leadership and threatening to send U.S. troops south of the border to fight cartels, uh, demanding to build an expensive and unproductive uh, border wall, and to extort Mexico uh, to pay for it, uh, threatening to rip up NAFTA, throwing our border economies in chaos. Uh, for those of us in New Mexico and other border states, this is really beyond belief. Uh, and this approach is uh, completely and totally inappropriate for a neighbor, for an ally, and a nation uh, which we share many common bonds. Uh, now, before the wall became a campaign issue, the United States and Mexico had already taken strong measures to address security. Uh, the U.S.-Mexico 21st century border management has allowed the two countries uh, to work together on the issues of security and tracking risky shipments uh, while also allowing trade to increase. And uh, I'm wondering what both of you think with groups such as this, the Chamber of Commerce, the Council on Foreign Relations have endorsed these bilateral security programs. Do you believe that expanding these programs would be more beneficial than building an unproductive and expensive wall? Well, the, the answer again is an overwhelming yes. Um, I think both of these studies that you cited uh, won the Merida Agreement. I think the Mexicans were concerned with some of the, just, um, they considered some of those measures a bit intrusive, but nonetheless, I think they, they're, they've been resolved a lot of those problems. So yes, the Merida Initiative, I believe, should be continued. It involves helicopters, uh, military cooperation, cartels, you know, look what Mexico did right after our election. They sent El Chapo, they extradited. They continue with these extraditions, as you mentioned, a number of statistics that, that are so important. Um, on on uh, expanding the relationship, I think because of the rupture that has taken place and the relationship in such bad shape, I think additional measures uh, are needed strengthening bilateral ties in areas like education, uh, scholarships, uh, medical technology. You, you know, our border, Senator Udall, you've done a lot on our border to enhance ties, uh, ports of entry, um, the, the cooperation on endemic diseases at the border, which are a big problem, environmental issues, uh, clean air. Uh, I worry about the climate change issue now being de-emphasized with, as you know, a border that, that needs strengthening. But I think you hit the nail on the head. Um, you know, the United States and Mexico were bound together by geography, by trade, by family, by culture, uh, by affinity. We're, you've got uh, several million Mexicans that are in the United States that are voters, that are the Hispanic, a growing Hispanic community, and then you've got the 11 million that are worried about deportation, that, that are, it's a very tense situation. They're scared. This is not America, uh, I think. And, and, and we've mentioned the economic ties. U.S. and Mexico economies, they don't compete with each other. We complement each other. We make each other more competitive in the global market. And, you know, across the board, uh, let me just say something about some of the immigrants that are in all of our states. They're not violent criminals, they're patriotic. They, they want to work. Uh, they're uh, hardworking. They make enormous contributions 
to the American economy? I mean, what's going to happen to the security, restaurant business, agriculture, construction? Uh, some of these industries might collapse. I think Senator Udall, an article in New Mexico in the Albuquerque Journal yesterday, basically said that uh, the New Mexico economy is dependent right. on immigrants. It's dependent. It would seriously be harmed if all of a sudden that disappeared. So, in conclusion, we need each other. We need to work with each other, not fight. And, and the first step is to not just end some of this rhetoric, but take specific steps uh, that in the area of geopolitical, soft power, uh, geopolitical issues relating to our shared interests, uh, we need to work together. And that's not happening. No. May I just jump in real quickly, uh, Senator? Uh, I'm one of those, and I, I suspect Governor uh, Richardson is as well, who sees the border as where our two nations are, is join, are joined, not where they're divided. And if you take the U.S.-Mexico economy along that border, uh, 100 miles on either side, it would be in and of itself uh, one of the top 10 economies in the world. Yeah. And so, I mean, that's, that's that kind of, uh, and, and so how do we make it safe for people on both sides, for commerce on both sides? And uh, there's all, all sorts of sort of private sector cooperation, uh, as well as uh, government cooperation, which will be, uh, which will be uh, fortify the relationship uh, in, in, uh, in terms of security and an opportunity to prosper. Thank you. And, they, and let me... Uh, just finish by saying, Governor Richardson, you really set an example as governor as to how to work with Mexico, both with the states and with uh, the, the Mexican uh, federal entity. You, you traveled a lot there. You were, uh, you were a real presence. And I think that's the kind of cooperation that's needed. And, and one of the things that I did as state attorney general, I remember when there were issues about the uh, judiciary and their police, we would loan them prosecutors. I mean, they were open to ideas, and they've done a lot of reforms, and they've made great strides there. So I, I think there's a much better approach than this accusatory approach that they're using, uh, that the president's using. So uh, I thank you both. It's been a very good discussion, and I'm hoping that Senator Kane's going to ask you some questions in Spanish. All right.